What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It's your boy, MM2K. Back again with another video as promised. As promised, okay? Now, what are we doing here? All right. As the title reads, this is going to be a new ongoing series. It's called MM2K Presents Cloud Gaming Confidential. This is episode one. Now, what, what is this all for? Um... For those that follow my content, follow my channel, and and, and have supported uh, what I do here, and, and I'm very thankful for that. You guys have noticed that I am very enthusiastic about cloud gaming um, and its technology. However, you same followers don't feel the same affinity that I do. You know, you guys have responded to me in ways like you're ready to check a, chuck a bunch of tomatoes at me on stage, right? And I get it, and I get it. And I think a lot of it is apprehension. I'll say that. And I believe that apprehension comes from a fear that if cloud gaming is successful, it's going to wipe away the, the, the work towards being able to make games that work well on a dedicated device and vis-a-vis -vis destroying top-notch fidelity. And I'm here to tell you, despite any positive things that I say about cloud gaming in this episode or in the entire series, I can tell you rest assured that we are a long way from cloud technology even competing or even being a viable full-time option over dedicated devices okay so with that being said let's get straight into the program so we all are on the same page never uh, um the same understanding of this technology and how it can benefit us and then we can grow in our knowledge whether at the end of the day um, you guys feel the same way about it the way I do or not. You know what I'm saying? Let's all be informed. So let's get into it. All right. So again, this is called MM2K Presents Cloud Gaming Confidential Episode 1. All right. And then Episode 1, here's what I want to do. I'm going to focus on about six platforms, six platforms that I think are noteworthy in this race for minds and hearts in cloud gaming. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk about my experience with all six of these different platforms up until now. And then as this series progresses, I'm going to further test each of these systems, same real world situations. We're gonna talk about different things outside of their technical performances. And then we're gonna help mold where each of these ecosystems fit into a gamer's possibly uh, day-to-day -day activity right you know what i'm saying or a gamer's needs if if any at all right we're gonna rank them based upon that okay now again like i said this episode we're gonna talk about my performance experience up until now with each each six of these ecosystems and i'll explain what these eco ecosystems are and what they do in a little bit however once i do this episode i'm going to do some rigorous testing. I'm going to do some serious, rigorous testing, world, real world testing further, uh, uh, further along from what I've done over the last year for those systems that have been available that long. Right. And then I'm going to come back in a follow up episode and do some post episode performance, you know, after I do all that testing. Then we're going to get into the meat and potatoes. Like I said, we're going to talk about product placement. Like, all right, forget how this stuff performs. How does this hit your, how does this hit my wallet, MM2K? And is it feasible because of data caps? Like how does this thing work all together, right? And what are our options um, in light of all those obstacles that the gaming media isn't talking about because they wanna get clicks. Again, this is a channel here for the truth. So we're gonna get into all of that. And then we're gonna talk, talk about overall, vis-a-vis -vis performance, vis-a-vis -vis product placement, what could possibly be the best option and for what gamer, okay? First, let's talk about the ecosystem types, all right? And first, we're gonna talk about out-of-network ecosystem type, the, uh, the, or rather the out-of-network ecosystem type. Now, what do I mean by out-of-network? Out-of-network defined here, through this series on this channel, represents gaming software that is solely cloud-based, okay? and or a service that allows you to play games out of the out of in, in a different network from where the gaming application is stored all right 
So let me talk about these different platforms and explain to you how they fit into one of these buckets. All right, so here goes the six plat. Oh, here goes some of the platforms that, or all of the platforms, I'm sorry, that I'm gonna be talking about that work out of network. Geoforce NVIDIA, okay? Geoforce that's made by NVIDIA is strictly cloud-based, as I mentioned in a prior slide. So there's a server somewhere that it's, a, it's like a gaming rig, a virtual gaming rig that, you, that allows you to store these games that you already own on, on a PC client, whether it's Steam, Epic Game Store, whatever. You store these on this gaming rig, this virtual gaming rig, and then NVIDIA Geoforce Now will allow you to stream it to various devices. Now, Project X Cloud, which is Microsoft's uh, version of that, simply works off of your Xbox games. Okay, so if you own an Xbox game, uh, you can stream it from their their their, their X uh, Project Xbox uh, Xbox One X server blades, right? And you can stream it to multiple devices in the, in the same um, order that I spoke of with NVIDIA. All right, Shadow Blade also is a, is solely a cloud based ecosystem but the thing with shadow blade is even though it allows the end user to have a real snazzy graphic user interface or gui um to select their games easily and quick it's basically a virtual pc it goes beyond being just a virtual gaming rig. it's a virtual pc and that's solely cloud-based and lastly for the out of uh, out of network products we're going to talk about steam link Steam Link is Valve's solution to cloud gaming, but Steam works a little bit different. What Steam Link does is it's not solely based in the cloud. It takes your games directly from your gaming PC rig, and then it bounces it either off one of their uh, um, one of their servers and one of their server form locations, and bounces it to you wherever you're at. Or with the network, it just streams it through your router and streams it to your device. Either way, it's not it's not a cloud-based solution, but it can work out of network. And we're going to talk about the former that I described where it takes it from your PC and maybe you're at the laundromat and it'll bounce it off of a server and from that server bounce it to your device while you're at the laundromat, okay? So I'm going to talk about the out of network version of Steam Link first. And I'm going to rank them. So let's talk, it. this is a perfect segue, y'all. Number five, out of network, is Steam Link. <laughs> out of the five out of network things, this, this ranks last. Here's why, okay. So let me go over the pros though. Pros of Steam Link, which is in beta, is the customization is deep. Um, you can kind of see the customization screen here and in my experience with it, it allows you to customize how controllers work, you can get into big picture mode with Steam. There's a bunch of stuff you can do, and it's and its options and its customization is a lot more robust um, than the other uh, platforms. So if you want to tinker with it to try to get the best performance for you, you can do that. You can increase its performance or its quality based upon these customizations. That being said, I don't care what you do to this damn thing. It's not stable enough for serious gameplay. Like... A game that I play, to maybe to a lot of people's, you know, uh, surmise, is a game that I play is Ghost Recon Breakpoint, all right? And I know it's not everybody's favorite game, but Ghost Recon Breakpoint um, requires a lot of precision. For those that are familiar with the game, you guys know that Ghost Recon Breakpoint, um, you know, if you're, if you're messing with the wolves, which are the top tier enemies in the game, if you don't take them out in three seconds, you're dead. You're dead, period. Unless you're of the, like, the same rank as them. And I know we're near a wolves rank right now at this time of this recording. So if I were to use Steam Link and try to play Ghost Recon Breakpoint, if it was available there, and I got to do precision shooting, I'm going to die. <laughs> because the lag and stuff on it is bad. That, that And... Here's the thing though, Steam Link wasn't always like this. Steam Link, when it first hit the scene, was strictly an in-network product. And as it being an in-network product, it, I really didn't notice any input lag, you know, but I'll get into that later about the in-network thing. But now that they got this 
bouncing off of data center services and stuff like that, it, 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 it's become really bad. It's become really bad. And there's a lot of work they need to do. So here goes my rankings for it. Visuals right now are three out of five. They're okay. But the lag is bad. It's two out of five. The stability. And when I say stability, I mean, like, how does it handle clusters in your network? Um, I'd like to see when there's clusters in your network that the service may bump down your resolution a little bit. The stuttering might be minimal, but I don't want to see a complete stoppage of gameplay. And with Steam Link, that's what you see with clusters. You know, I understand if your network is completely bogged or something like that, that's different. But, um, you know, atypical of top tier cloud services, you know what I'm saying? Or out of network services, your 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 resolution will get bumped down. You might see little, little frame drops here and there, minimal, you know what I mean? for the better networks but with steam it just completely like shuts down you know what i'm saying and overall because of that overall it gets a 2.2 out of 5. not really that good okay number four is project x cloud now that's in beta um here's the pros of project x cloud i know this is one of the more controversial things because i have a lot of xbox fans that come at me for this ranking and su some of the more critical things that i've said but let me go over it um, Project X Cloud, the pros are it's pretty. Out of all the cloud streaming services, it's consistently the most pretty. Period. So then I give that a four out of five. Um, however, I'm going to be honest with you, I think that's its detriment right now. Um, because the fidelity is so great, it focuses more on quality and it rips away the performance. You know, and those of you that are used to adjusting performance over quality in games, y'all know what I'm talking about. And if you're familiar with some of these cloud services, you you may know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Um, because in the former, which I talked about, which is Steam Link, you can gauge your quality over performance, you know, selections to, to make things a little bit better. That being said, you don't have such a, you don't have said option with Xbox, with Project X Cloud. And their focus on it being so pretty causes crazy things like uh drift serious drift the drift gets so bad that there's been times that i've hit the left trigger and i'm twirling like a ballerina and, and, and you guys for me with my with my uh content have heard me say that dozens and dozens of times you know what i mean and lag is just bad you know input response is bad and all other stuff and stability project x cloud is one of those things too where it doesn't just bump down resolution because again it's trying to look pretty it stays looking pretty. It's like the visuals are locked, okay? And because the visuals are locked, it'll just stop. It'll just stop. You'll get a flashing, you know, signal more often than not, more often than the more uh, better performing services, and it completely stops your game. And that can be critical, again, when you're playing a multiplayer game or Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Again, if I run across um, the Wolves, which I have, for example, I've used the in-network one, and I'll talk about that a little bit, and it does the same thing, and it, I got killed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, so, um, not really the greatest right now in its phase in the beta. Um, uh, overall, I give it a 2.8 out of 5, which really isn't the greatest score. But it, it, and, it's, and it's a little bit more frustrating and a shame because this is Microsoft. They battle Google to be the best company in the world. They put all their eggs in the basket of uh, Game Pass, X Cloud. Even though this is a more recent beta, this is 2019. There's been others that come out in beta a couple years ago, and they premiered in beta way better than Project X Cloud. So um, that's disappointing to say the least. But with that, I digress and go to my next slide. Number three. Now this is where you get. Now we're going to start getting into the cloud-based services that really. I think as far as performance or concern are, are, are battling it out. You know what I mean? And these are great quality services. Number three is Shadow. Uh, Shadow Blade, that's in beta. Um, the pros of Shadow, and, and it's not really the, the most known um, entity, but it's a very good one. Um, Shadow, the pros of Shadow is, is straight. Is, it gives you a straight virtual PC. And I talked about that earlier. You get a virtual PC and you can you know, use it remotely, or you can just use it strictly for games. It's up to you. It has a graphic user interface that's great for gaming. Um, 
and it's real nice. Uh, so, you know, my, my cons are though, it doesn't handle network cluster very well in comparison to the top three. It handles it better than xCloud and Steam Link, but you know, as a top three item, it doesn't handle it as well as the other two that I'm about, that I'm gonna show you um, shortly. Uh, I'll, 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 let me talk about that. So overall, the visuals are three out of five. They're okay, you know, they're okay. Common for a lot of these cloud services. Um, the lag is very good. Lag is not bad at all. Um, four out of five, very good lag, you know, and, and, and it's a real competitor for some serious gaming. Here, here's where it kind of like, no, it's not too bad. Three and a half out of five is like a seven out of 10. You know what I'm saying? If you put it in a more no knowable uh, 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 ranking scale. Um, the problem is, is that the way it handles network clusters is it takes it a little bit longer to adjust. Like it will bump down resolution but then you get a little bit more pauses than, than I would kind of like to see, but it's okay. You know what I'm saying? It's still fathomable for serious play. Another thing though, however, is if, the, if it is in a network cluster, it's hard to even start the platform to where the other two platforms have some other options that they go through and I'll talk about it. With that being said, overall, I give it a three and a half out of five, seven out of 10 really and i'm and again it might deserve a little bit better than that but again this is just all preliminary you know it's a very good service and it's good for serious gameplay okay next number two is geoforce now which is in beta um the pros of it is is very well-rounded performance despite this the device you stream to I've streamed this thing to everything but a goddamn fork <laughs> and it's worked well. You know what I'm saying? Um, the cons are, which it really took me some time to even think about the cons, but there is one. It's not really robust in its options as I would like to see for a top tier cloud service. I would really like to see more options, kind of like what Steam Link has. And locating your games isn't always easy to. You know what I'm saying? It's not the most user-friendly thing to always locate your game. Sometimes you got to kick in and kick out of the servers. But once you get the game started, baby, oh, it's, it's a beautiful thing indeed. The visuals, I give it three and a half out of five. It's good. It's, it's cool. It's cool. Um, lag, four out of five. You know what I'm saying? Stability, 4.5 out of five. And overall, it's a four out of five. It's a real, it's eight out of ten. Real serious contender for, you know, if you want, you want to do some serious gaming, God damn it, get into GeForce now. You know what I'm saying? I, I I I have nothing but glowing praise for it. But that said, it's not number one. So let's get to the controversial part of my video. <laughs> number one. Yes, you've guessed it. And again, this is all preliminary based off of what I've been able to test up until now. I'll do more robust, robust testing soon. But the truth is the truth, baby. Number one is... Google Stadium, which is in production, quote unquote, but I got an asterisk next to it because let's be honest, baby. If we being real with each other, y'all support me. I can't lie to y'all like this. I can't lie. I ain't gonna lie to kick it. This ain't no real production. I can't even call it. This ain't no real launch. This ain't even a soft launch. This is a paid for beta like Shadow. When Shadow hit the scene, they made you pay the $35 a month even though it was to be tested. They That was because they were a low revenue company. It's pretty much a startup and they needed the capital to be able to make upgrades as necessary. Now I get it. Google Stadia has to do the same thing. Even though they're the richest company in the world, they battle um, Microsoft back and forth for that title. Um, it, it's going to take a lot of money to be the best. And I get why they want to do it. And the rollout may have not been the best. And we're going to talk about that in a further episode. It might have some issues with data cats. We're going to talk about that in a further episode. We're talking strictly performance. Keep that in mind. This is preliminary and this is strictly performance. And talking those two things, man, oh man. I'm gonna tell you this. Um, if you've been following me on Twitter, you've seen that I had this at number three. And I had it on number three, at number three, solely based off of Project Stream. 
the beta that it had last year. Beta blew my mind. I was skeptical too of it until I played that damn beta and that beta blew my mind. And I'm I'm a I got my founders edition in the mail um, a day before this uh, uh, recording, and I did get my code late, so I was a little dismayed. I was a little dismayed. Um, I was well, really, I, I was very upset. <laughs> and then finally, my code came in the mail because you need an invite code in, e in order to even activate this thing. So I got my code, and I was about to do scram punks podcast with Dirk Grigney on his channel check it out hashtag scram punks podcast and i didn't have enough time to set up my google chromecast and do the 4k stuff so i did it solely off a web browser now i want you guys to understand that off a web browser which is on a pc that has simply just an rdx 2070 not a ti not a super okay an rdx 2070 simply an i7-8700 processor that has three monitors hooked up to it and on one monitor i had hulu running at 4k that in my browser i was getting um sub 60 frames per second anywhere between 50 to 60 frames per second consistently and what it did with all that network cluster, it just simply bumped my resolution down, baby. It bumped it down. I want to say 1080, the lowest maybe was 900p. It wasn't 720. It wasn't 720. It was like 900, maybe 1080p. You know what I'm saying? I mean, maybe 900p, but definitely 1080p. With all that happening, I had Discord running, which can be a little heavy on the resources sometimes. You know what I'm saying? It just was crazy. I'm, I'm using up my bus because I got all this crap hooked up to it. Every single port of my computer is being utilized, baby. With all that happening, and we know Chrome is not the best optimized web browser. That pulls up resources too. All that going on. No skip frames, nothing. The only thing that I had that I noticed, which was a little bit different, something that I've never noticed before is that it had like anti-drift, meaning it was a little bit more difficult a couple of times to move the stick vertically so it wasn't a drift where you tap it and then it just spins around it was like oh it was like you know a little bit of a struggle and it happened to me twice i want to say for like two seconds but again i was in horrible network conditions and that's the worst that it, it got and that blew my mind that blew my mind so because of that it, it, ha it, it you know, it, even in this preliminary stage, it jumped from number three to number one as far as out of network performance is concerned. And I know I'm going on and on and on, but let me let, let me continue on to the next thing. All right. Now we're going to talk about in network ecosystems. Okay. So, in network ecosystems, as defined here, are it's, it's gaming software that is being played from a dedicated device within the same network and not dedicated devices streaming the gameplay you're controlling to another device again within the same network. So like the like PS Now, I mean PS Remote, I mean. PS Remotes allow you to stream your gameplay either to a PS Vita or now to an Android phone, something like that, as long as you're on the same network. You know what I'm saying? I know people are jerry-rigging it and doing this and doing that, but... No, I'm talking about as the program was intended and optimized for. It's not optimized for this jury rigging. It's not, it wouldn't be fair for me to judge it off of jury rigged features, right? That the, the software wasn't optimized for. Okay. So the three in network products that I'm testing is um, console stream from Microsoft Xbox, uh, PS Remote from Sony, and Steam Link from Valve. All right. So here's how I rank them. Number three. Again, at the bottom of the barrel, Steam Link, man. I'm very disappointed at the game. No, I, I don't know what happened since you guys were pinging stuff off of routers. Again, when Steam Link first hit the scene, it was strictly in network. And I would just, I was streaming to a second generation Fire Stick TV. And I was playing Metro Last Light. And that thing was damn well flawless. Hardly any noticeable lag. The way that was performing, that would have been number one. So the different, I don't know what they did, but they got to optimize. I, 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 
again, it's not when it's in network, it's not pinging out. But maybe it's some optimization in, in, in the program now that created some type of artificial bottleneck or something. I don't know. Again, I'm not going to claim to be the tech guy. But something happened when they activated that that the, the, the out-of-network feature. You know, it, it's not consistent. It's nowhere near as good. And again, when Steam Link came out based upon its performance, it would have been number one. It was that damn good. It would have been number one. That said, it's sad to say, you know, again, same pros and cons. Customization is deep, but it's not stable enough for serious gameplay. And pretty much the same damn ranking. It's, it's the same thing for some reason. Three out of five. Two out of five. You know, three out of five for visuals. Two out of five for lag. 1.5 out of five for stable stability. Overall, 2.2 out of five. Very disappointed. And I got a gig up and the gig down. My modem and every router, everything is, is optimized. You know, no problems. Number two, console stream from Xbox. This is from Xbox, okay? That's in beta. Same thing going on here. It's in it's 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 it's, it's midway. It's midway. Pros are it's pretty. Again, it's still pretty. The the best fidelity out of all the services. But again, not stable enough for serious gameplay. When I was playing Ghost Recon, here's what I did. I was playing Ghost Recon, and I thought I would have something positive to say. I was trying to throw Microsoft the bone. I thought I would have something positive to say. So I had NVIDIA running um, on my phone, and I was playing some Ghost Recon. And then I had uh, Project xCloud running after that. And I was playing Ghost Recon. Well, no, it wasn't Project xCloud. I'm sorry. It was the game stream. Now, by me using the game stream feature, I'm giving the game stream feature uh, an unfair advantage. I'm in network. I'm in my house. It's bouncing off my internet feed, which I have a one. I have a gig up and a gig down. And even though it's in network, gig up, get down, super fast router modem. Um, I got everything's laced in Cat Eight cords. Cat Eight cords. It's damn well the fastest um, LAN cords you can get retail. I don't even know if Cat 9's out yet, but I got Cat 8 cords laced in everything. And even under those conditions, Ghost Recon Breakpoint on NVIDIA um, GeForce Now played so much better than on the game stream and network for my Xbox console. And I know, I get it. I've had people say, MM2K, did you check the gigawatts in the, in, in the Bibblehertz? No, 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 no. Everything's optimized. I know what I'm doing. I've been playing PS4 remote. You know what I'm saying? No problem. Just boot up the damn thing. I checked a couple of settings. Boom. I did the same thing with, with Project X Cloud and, and the game stream. You know, like, come on. We got to stop it. We Sometimes we just got to call a spade a spade. Okay. Um, but here's my overall ratings. Again, the visuals are great. Four and a half out of five. I mean, four out of five. The lag is three and a half out of five. The stability is three and a half out of five. And overall, it's a 3.3 out of five, 6.6 .6 out of 10. All right. You got to be rolling at a seven at least to be considered serious for a contender for serious gameplay. So even though it's better, of course, than Project X Cloud, it's in network. You know what I'm saying? So that's not saying a lot. And with that being said, it's not hard to guess what's my number one. Number one is PlayStation Remote. Now, I get it. It's in production. But again, it's banging against Microsoft, the richest company in the world that's known for its software and that's selling as your servers. Now, here's the pros for it. Very well-rounded performance, despite devices stream to. I've tried, uh, I've tried um, streaming it to various phones once it became active, and it was very responsive. And it's just, it damn well just as responsive as... Uh, the play the, the the PS Vita. I mean, it was flawless with the PS Vita. And it was flawless on my goddamn phone. I couldn't believe it. Or on the phones that I use. Um, however, it's not real robust in options. Um, here's the thing. I had to think of that con too. It's kind. Of, I'm pretty much saying the same things that I said about uh, Google Stadia here. You know what I'm saying? I had to really think of a con though for this one like how I had with NVIDIA, but it's not robust in options, but it's not a horrible thing because I haven't run into any performance. I've, ne I've never run 
Oddly enough, I've never run into performance issues with PlayStation Remote. I may have a little bit when I was streaming it to my PC as far as resolution bumping down a little bit more than I desired. But on the phone, you're not really going to notice that nor care. So, great job, PlayStation. Great job. You're doing better, you're doing better than Microsoft. I, 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 who would have known? So, with that said, I want to thank everybody for coming, for joining. This is all preliminary again. We're going to do, get more robust soon. And thank you very much. I hope you guys appreciate it. I hope you understand why I have an affinity for it. Because... Um, I can game on the go, like Nvidia. I was playing some some some. I, I look like an old nerd sitting in the mall. I was playing some Nvidia uh, GeForce now at the mall, playing some of that that Ghost Recon Breakpoint, taking out some wolves. Man, it was a great time. Shadow, uh, where was that? I? I was over. I was at the hospital. I was at the hospital visiting a relative, playing Shadow, and they didn't have the best network. And Shadow was was pretty good, but it was allowed. It, was, it enabled me to see. Like when it was, when networks get clustered and stuff like that, how it, you know, it kind of isn't as great as NVIDIA, but it was still good. And Google, like I said, with its um, out of network on a browser, I'm gonna be testing more, but golly, out of, oh my, on a Chrome browser? With all that, with all that network action going on, I couldn't believe it. Lastly, um, kudos to PlayStation Remote, man. In network, it's fantastic. Um, here's my message to to Steam. Steam, you gotta get it. To, you gotta get it together. I, I, you've partnered with EA, and that partnership is gonna hinge as far as EA having any success on how well you can fix this. So hopefully you're listening. Now some people may say, well, in my metropolitan area, it's fine. But here's what you guys gotta understand: these are travel systems. These are things that are utilized you for you on a travel. So what, what purpose do they serve if they only work in remote locations? That's how a console works. That's how dedicated devices work. They work only in remote locations. Cloud servers are supposed to be diverse. So if they're not diverse, what purpose are they serving? And it's not like I'm out in Wyoming somewhere. I'm in Pennsylvania. It may not be as a big as a metropolitan area as New York is, but it's, it's, it's you know somewhat near a major city status. I got a gig up, gig down. Like, what's going on here? You know what I'm saying? So Steam Link got to do better and Project X Cloud. You know, I again, you're not at the bottom, but you're in the middle. Aren't you tired of being in the middle? Like, when can you come out the gate just just, just on fire like you used to in the past? Used to in the past, come out, out of the gate on fire. And I missed that about Xbox. And I'm still seeing this same somewhat lackadaisical approach to here look we're just here to you know what i'm saying this ge approach to everything so hopefully they get over that all right but i will be doing more robust testing and maybe project X, i mean at the beginning of me doing some of preliminary testing they were at the bottom they rose up above steam not saying a lot but it is progress so maybe as i do testing this week and next it'll be higher let's see but i, I want to put this out there so everybody know where they're at and, 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 and what purpose these can serve. They're not going to take over consoles no time soon, but they're a good supplement service. And, um, you know, those four, Google Stadia, NVIDIA, Shadow, and PlayStation 4 Remote do their jobs very well. So kudos to them. With that being said, that's it from your boy MM2K. Until the next video, I hope y'all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.